What's up, Totem Pole Nation? Welcome back to Lambo and Matt's World of Sports. Today we're getting into the NBA playoff picture. Quite an early look here. We're about a month out from the playoffs in the NBA. If that is when, let's not lie here, most people start getting seriously tuned into the NBA's playoff times because a lot of times that's when you get your best games. You also get some blowouts. We know it's not always super entertaining over there, but the playoffs are where the action is. Before we get into it, who's in, who's out, who's in that bubble area of the play-in, um, some surprising teams in there. I'll, I'll let you know before we get started. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. TotemPoleNation.com is the place to go for some gear to support the boys, as well as our socials, which are scrolling on the bottom if you wanted to give us a follow. Huge shout-out to Sideline Sports Network. Let's get into the playoffs right now. Well, here comes the playoff bracket, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen. Do you see what's going on in the universe of America? Do you see? Do you see very closely into what happened? Do you see my Boston Celtics at the number one seed? They beat the Suns last night. Um, I understand they lost a couple games here and there. They won four straight. Um, look at the issue. Eastern Conference, right? The Eastern Conference is a basically a blowout, right, for the number one seed by nine games, right? Milwaukee under Doc Rivers at 43 and 24. You got 42 and 24 for Cleveland. Third seed, New York Knicks struggling to Julius Randle injury at the fourth seed. Orlando Magic making some noise on Indiana Pacers with new head coach, right? Tyrese Halliburton, right? Sixth seed. Philadelphia with the Joel Embiid injury has completely dropped. Uh, hopefully they don't get knocked out of the playoff spot. The Miami Heat, they're a disappointment as well. Obviously, they lost to the Denver Nuggets the other day as well. So, seven to seven through the 10 seeds will be playing for the play-in to see who gets in the playoffs. So, as of right now, the 76ers, Miami Heat, Chicago Bulls, and Atlanta Hawks will be in the play-in competing for that eighth seed or that seventh spot of the playoffs when time comes. Um, the Western Conference, right? OKC at the number one seed. Shea Gooders, Alexander doing what he does. The Denver Nuggets, the defending champions, they have the same record right behind them, but it comes down to that conference record that OKC has a better conference record than Denver Nuggets. The Minnesota Timberwolves, they lost a couple games. I get that, but – a 20-point comeback against the Clippers the other night, great. The Clippers are number four seed. The Pelicans are number five, seeing up very quietly. The Kings, okay, the Kings were, you know, better last year than they were this year, but they're still number six seed. They're relevant. Then here comes the Phoenix Suns, the Dallas Mavericks um, at seven and eight, and the Los Angeles Lakers and the Golden State Warriors. So the play-in will be between – Phoenix, Dallas, Los Angeles, and the Golden State Warriors. Obviously, the Lakers are old. Golden State is old as well. But my final playoff prediction as I go back into the East, Boston stays number one. I think Cleveland jumps to number two spot. I think Milwaukee goes to three. New York stays at four. I think, no, I'll put Orlando Magic at four just because Jalen Bronson has been off and on, right? No Julius Randle. Orlando at five. Give me Indiana at six. Uh, I'm not confident in either Miami or Philadelphia. So I bet Miami and Philadelphia will stay the same due to Jimmy Buckets going to get some buckets. And I think the Philadelphia 76 would barely make the playoffs without Joe and Embiid. Tyrese Maxey has his nights, but he needs more help so that is my final eight and going into the west right this is a three-way tie it could go to anybody it can go to i'm gonna give you denver at one okc at two minnesota at three the clippers at four i'll give you the kings at five pelicans at six i give you the mavericks at seven and the phoenix suns at eight and i think the los angeles lakers and the gold state warriors will miss the playoffs that is my prediction. Um, what are your thoughts on the playoff picture? Who gets in and how do you feel? 
Yeah, so I'll start in the East. I'm with you. Boston's going to hold on to that. Um, and I also think that Cleveland is probably the second best team here. I think they'll get bumped up to that number two as well. Milwaukee stays. I think the Knicks realistically stay. And the five, six, and seven seeds, I think, Magic, Pacers, and Sixers are the three that I'm really keeping my eye <clears throat> my eye on to move. So Joel for the Sixers is going to play the last week of the season. We have seven games in April. Um, split those into those two weeks until the season finale on the 14th of April. If he plays four or five games to end the season, um, obviously he's not going to be a hundred percent immediately, but with the way that the Pacers don't really play defense. Um, I think that both of those teams could flip back and forth because like you mentioned, we've seen Tyrese put the team on his back and go crazy. We've also seen him need more from the guys around him and they just can't give it. So with Tyrese at his best coming back with so much less attention on him, if Joel is on the floor, we're, 21 and 7, I believe, with Joe on the floor, 10 and 31 with him off. That number is a little bit off, I think, because we've either way, significantly better single digit losses with Joe on the floor without or 10 and 31. So if he comes back for those last four or five games and they rattle off four wins, it could be argued. Now it Obviously, these are the records right now. We still have a month left to see how it really shakes up. Um, but I do think the five, six, and seven spots are what you're going to look out for in the East. In the West, and it's just hilarious to see how much deeper the West is than the East. Nothing new there, but at least there's some parity amongst the, the top teams. Like you mentioned, the Thunder, the Nuggets, the Timberwolves, all three of them, uh, you could make an argument for. I think by the end of the year, uh, my bet is going to be the Nuggets get that number one seed. That might just be recency bias with them winning the championship last year, but I think that's deserved. Um, the Thunder are still super young, and I don't know if down the stretch that's who I'm going to put my money on. We've seen a super young, really good Thunder team in the past that made a run to the finals and they couldn't get it done. I'm not comparing this team to Russ and KD and James Harden. I'm just saying we've seen this kind of before. I think that they can be really good this year and not win, and it's only positive things in the future. They still have all those draft picks that they get to use or deal out for better players. So high thoughts on the Thunder for sure. I don't know if this is the year, though, that I'm putting my money on it. Kind of similar with the Timberwolves, except for – They've got, you know, multiple-time defensive player of the year. They have probably one of the most exciting young guys in the league in Anthony Edwards. Cat uh, is still one of the best stretch fives in the league, um, if not the best. So they've got a squad over there for sure. I just don't know if I'm putting it over the Nuggets. The Clippers, what's new? They're, they're a really good regular season team. Someone please give me an argument from anywhere in the NBA world because I'm trying to watch, I'm trying to read what I can about this Clippers team that's going to convince me that it's anything different from what we've seen for the past 10 years. They are so good in the regular season. They've got names from top to bottom on the roster. And when they get to the playoffs, not shit happens. We can go back to Lob City with CP3, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, J.J. Reddick, Nicholas Batum. Like, they were supposed to have an era. And you know who came in and stopped that? The Warriors. All right? So what did they do? They went out and made trades to get better. They sent away Gilders Alexander for Paul George. They signed Kawhi Leonard. We just brought in James Harden over there in L.A. They traded for Zubak a few years ago from the Lakers. This is supposed to be, you know, the team that does it. And what do they do every regular season? Play well. They play really well. Well enough for, 
you know, Kendrick Perkins and a bunch of other guys on ESPN and NBA TV and FS1 to be talking like, this this is the year for the Clippers, I'm telling you. No, it's not. It's it's the same shit as the Bills on the other side. The past, whatever, however long Josh has been in the league, like six years at this point. Similar thing can be said for the Clippers. Past seven-ish years. It's supposed to be their year, and it just never is. So, yeah, they're the four seed. They're, what, four games out of the one seed. I'm not surprised. They're a good team led by good players. I don't expect them to make any noise. They're going to get to the second round, and they're going to lose. Pelicans, it's exciting to finally see the Pelicans here with, you know, like after the Zion pick and then him not playing for like two years, basically. Um, it's cool to see. They, they've built a squad that can make some noise. I don't expect them to make a run. The Kings, like you said, I'm disappointed by. I thought that they would have taken more of a step to be more on par with those top four teams. The Suns, surprise, surprise, <laughs> team with no depth isn't locked into the playoffs, right? Surprise, surprise, the team with no depth whatsoever is not locked into the playoffs. KD is one of the best players of this generation, one of the best players of all time. If you don't have a consistent starter um, outside of, like, the top four guys in your lineup, not even consistent starter, just a guy that you can trust giving 25 minutes to a night, you're not going to go but so far, right? They, they just don't have the depth. That has been the knock on them since this team was put together. Uh, the Mavs, I expected more from them for sure, especially Luka having an MVP-type year numbers-wise. But if you're the eighth seed, you're not winning the, the MVP. That's just how it is, right? Like, you can't. Especially with the surrounding cast. Like, it's not like they have a bunch of bums out there. I feel like they improved on the team from last year when they basically chose not to make the playoffs, if you remember that. Um, I don't know. I, I was expecting more. Lakers, same thing. I was expecting more. The roster, it, it's just built up of so many streaky players. Players who you know these guys are good. And you know you've seen them have their nights. But it's just so few and far in between where you, you don't know when it's going to be a night when someone pops off and you can't put it on the back of a 40 year old LeBron James, even though he's still averaging, you know, like his career average, which is insane for him to be doing in this point of his career. You can't put it all on his back. That's just not the way that this team is going to win. They're going to have to figure something out in the, this last month or play their way in. And the Warriors, I don't know, man. I, I am so hesitant to talk shit on the Warriors because as soon as you think they're done, next year they're going to add somebody and they're going to make some run and you're going to look like an idiot again. And that's just how it works with the Warriors. This year, yeah, they've been disappointing. Um, I feel like they have more distractions than like any other team in the league, and it's minus maybe the Lakers with LeBron. But like, I feel like their distractions are all put on them by themselves. You know, like, the Draymond shit, like, you know who Draymond is. You've decided to keep him around. You, you've decided to handle him the way you have. Um, Clay has been a shell of himself, and he's been, like, crying in the media, like, oh, man, it really sucks just knowing that you're not as good as you used to be. It's like, well, dude, we're all watching it. It sucks for us, too. Figure it the hell out, okay? And so, I don't know. The bottom of both of these of these leagues – you know, like the Hawks, I was shocked with, disappointed. The Bulls, not really anything to talk about there. Kobe White had a great stretch in the season, but I don't know. The Heat, disappointing. Sixers suck. We'll see what they have what they have in those last two weeks with Joe. I don't know. It's, it's top-heavy. I don't feel like this is a year. You know, a couple of years ago, we saw Atlanta get to the conference finals. Um, after beating some really good teams. I don't think that this is a year where we're going to see that. I think the top three teams on each side are going to be the ones that we are really narrowed down to when it comes down to it. Yeah, we still got about uh, about a month left. 
at least 17 games to go, 18 games to go. Those weeks will go by quick through the March Madness, but we'll see what happens. But once the NBA playoff picture takes a good look, don't be surprised if uh, Goat James leaves the Lakers next season and goes somewhere else if they don't win the play in tournament because the Lakers in that roster, like you said, Anthony Davis being 40 points one night, 11 points the other night. Austin Reeves gets his buckets, but when does he get his buckets? I mean, they're dirt. Darvin Ham is the head coach. I don't even think he's a he great sucks. coach. He sucks. I, I don't think he's the greatest fit to be the Lakers head coach. I wouldn't be surprised if Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka go find another coach because it's the same. Yeah. It's been the same thing for the past two to three years. It's, it's, it's the same thing. I understand he made a Western Conference Finals, but it looks like LeBron will be leaving to go play with Bronny. That depends on how USC does in this tournament or the NIT or whatever happens. But I, I'm just – I'm not impressed with the Lakers. Never have been. Not impressed with Golden State. They got beat by 50 by Boston a week ago. So, we keep getting beat by 50. Um, the era of Golden State might be over, but I don't want to say it just yet because they go yeah. back next year and do something. Then, you know, this 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 is going to be clipped a year later. But yeah. it, this is it for Lambo Mass with the sports. We can like, comment, subscribe. Total Pole Nation, we want to thank Sasha for the platform. We will catch you later. NBA playoffs is on the way. Y'all have a great night. Peace out.